Let's say I come along and I steal your cell phone. It's like, oh, well, whatever. You just lost your cell phone. So now I got your, I got, oh, so I have her cell phone. It's, it's mine now. And you say, well, that's not fair. Well, neither is any of this fair. How is it fair that the person that starts out on top just automatically makes so much more and more and more and does more and has more opportunities just because you happen to be randomly born into some family? And then the family that along with all the other families is using power and wealth and all their decision making and just to pass laws to ensure that they stay up on top and everybody else stays on the bottom so other people don't compete with their kids. And then let's say I take your cell phone and I give it to my kids. So then this is a special cell phone. So your kids don't have it. My kids do. Then my kids start using this cell phone to get really rich. And then my kids' kids continue to do that. And it all was because back on this day in April in 2019, I stole somebody's cell phone and passed it on to my progeny and then my people and my group. And they all did really, really well. And then you're, you're going to be stuck down here or even down there. Because I stole something. Well, that's essentially what's happened. Stolen land from Native Americans. Stolen labor from black Americans. Have you ever like sat back? Has, have anybody in here ever sat back and thought about how wealthy the United States is because of that period of time called slavery that got free labor from people, from a, a, a massive, really large population of people? And how that just continues? What are we supposed to do? Right? You got to have some kind of opinion on it. So um, we're going to walk around with a few microphones. Let's go. Like, what do you do? What are the solutions? Proper tax collection. What would that mean? So what do you mean? Say more. So according to the city from IRS, IRS in America, there is about $125 billion that are not collected from the businesses. So you would say... You got to do a better, we have to do a better job of collecting more taxes from really wealthy people. Yeah. Who you think are not paying their fair share? It, it would help to distribute the wealth throughout the country, I think. Okay, it would help distribute the wealth. All right, but wealthy people are the ones that are making the decisions, so they also right. don't like that because why don't they like it? Because they're take, getting their money taken away. Yeah, that and they and they need and they're investing the money to create jobs and stuff. So they come up with all their arguments for why that's a bad idea. But OK, but you would start right there. I think the people that have um, very low incomes should be told how to be more creative than being discouraged all the time with bombarded with facts that they can't make it or anything like that. They should just be told to be more creative um, and try to get out of the situations. There. Okay, so you're saying people should, je all, what we really need to do is just tell people, hey, just be more creative in how you get out of situations, right? So you're saying just continue to empower people at the bottom. That's all you can do. So what about when people up here just keep shutting, putting walls up to people at the bottom, right? Like, for example, immigrants coming to the United States right now so, you know, I spent a lot of time in Latin America in communities that have been decimated by poverty. And people come to the United States. And, like, I remember when you are a parent and you, you know, like, talking. I remember the first time I watched a person die were these, this couple who brought, I was with a priest in Ecuador, and they brought their child to the priest, just hoping that beyond hope that he could do something. And the child died right in their arms as we we're standing there. I'm like, oh, my God. And so what he did was say last rites. And then shortly after that, the guy left for the United States because he didn't want his other children to die. So he's encouraged that some of them, hey, go do that. Go make that happen. And yet now here we are up here in all of our wisdom. Oh, we can't let all these people come in. And every single one of us would be that same person. And if we knew that person, we'd be like, wow, oh my God, I can't believe that. If that was my child, I'd do anything I had to do. But yet we're like closing walls up. So we can be creative. Like, hey, man, get, I don't know, swim around the wall. Like they build a wall, swim around it or get more education or do this or do that. And maybe that's the only thing we can do. Um, so probably policies that reduce individual debt, like uh, Medicare for all and universal uh public higher education 
Okay, so that's more of a socialist idea, right? So what you do is you're saying take tax money that we all contribute. Everyone in this class can, pays a tax, right? And you, so you take some of that money. We're all pay a little bit, right? Like so let's say our tuition dollars is like a tax. Let's say we all pay the same amount. And what we do is we take some of those tuition dollars and give it to the poorest among us who really struggle the most to, you know, pay for health care or pay for anything that they need and then give it to them to ensure that they have sort of a basic level of the ability to study, let's say, right? All right, me personally, I would lower corporate income taxes and, and taxes on the wealthy. So wait, hang on, you would lower corporate income taxes? And taxes on the wealthy. And taxes on the wealthy? Yes. And then what would you do with the money? I mean, the... Well, you would lower the taxes. So, yeah. So okay. you got to think about it. The wealthy people are the people are, who are making the jobs. Yeah. When you have more people working, you have more people paying taxes. So the economy gets better and it will fix itself. Sure. So you're saying one of the things, one of a basic conservative idea is put more money in the hands of rich people money that they can actually invest and build and build jobs and so on and so forth, right? Yes. That's the way to do it. And then the issue is they're going to create more jobs, but what we're seeing here, let me just throw in a yes but idea into that, okay? So look, this is actually getting more and more unequal. So we are putting more money in the hands of rich people. We have been doing that for the past 40 years, and it's getting more unequal, and it's projected to be more unequal. This is projected to grow. For example, right, this is growing, the gap is growing more and more, and more and more money is going into the top 1%, which presumably are the people that are creating the most jobs. And so that doesn't seem to be the answer. That's the one that many people who identify as conservative are putting out there, but it doesn't seem to be the answer to me because it's not working in the way. Because if it was working, we wouldn't see this. We would see this be start. we'd see this difference between Hispanic people and black people shrinking, not growing, and it's just growing. So it's an, I get that, so that, but that's the idea. It's like put money in the hands of rich people and tell them to go create jobs with it. I think something that we could potentially try to work on to start the ball rolling on the distribution of wealth would be to fix the patenting system. Um, fix the what? The patenting system. The patent system. Yeah, I didn't realize this until like a year ago that it's like really broken. Um, it costs about, on average, like $20,000 just in legal fees to get your patent yep. on whatever it is. And then it costs even more money to uh, stop infringements. On so, that. so your idea is if people who had cool ideas, people who are down here at the bottom, yeah. who nonetheless have cool ideas and are like, hey, man, I could like move forward with this cool idea and I could probably get my not only myself out of in a better situation, but people around me and... Oh my God, I could create jobs too, as an example, right? Yeah. And they, But it costs too much money, so therefore, all right, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, and even if you do get in there, like your patent, um, like small and medium companies can't really access that because only the big companies can really afford to uh, go after that and secure that patent from other people using it, like uh, making counterfeits and stuff like that. Yeah. So it wouldn't necessarily fix everything, but it could get the ball rolling a little bit. All right. Okay. All right. That's fair. I personally would advocate for radical international socialist armed revolution, but All right. I'm definitely a break out the guillotines kind of girl. Dude, right there. Yeah. Dude, it's the only thing. But yeah. the problem is when you have armed revolute revolution and you have violence, you're going to lead to more violence. Yes, which is why, I don't know, some people would say that's more of like an incrementalist approach, which I'm gonna, not going to lie, on the socialist spectrum, I do lean more towards incrementalism. Yeah. I feel like that's sort of like a last resort. But, like, we're headed that way if things don't change. Yeah, well... So it's really in these rich people's best interest if they want to keep their heads attached to their bodies in dude, order listen, to... Dude, listen, I used to use, I used to use an, an article in this class called when the guy made the argument that they're coming they're going to be coming for us with their pitchforks oh yeah he was a guy from the one percent yeah talking to other people in the one percent yeah and saying they're going to come at us with their pitchforks y'all we might yeah. as well do something and there's else. also this misconception that i heard from where's the conservative guy where are you there you are in your headphones yeah you right there see 
No, no, no. But he's just making. He just was saying what yeah, the but conservative like, a, argument was. I know, but there's a misconception within that conservative argument that like, like uh, the rich people and the people on top, the capitalist owner class, are the ones who create value. Yeah. And that's actually not true. Labor creates value. Before we had a capitalist system, before there was like a feudal system, yeah. there was like uh, agricultural societies, slave societies, yeah. labor has always created value. It's just the economic system which determines how that value is distributed. <laughs> so yeah, dude, you're wrong. That's no, bullshit. Like, yeah, yeah. Listen, dude, don't feel, hang on. No, but that's not, that's not his idea, dude. So um, this isn't relating to religion, but kind of the concept of what we're talking about yep. and how the wealthy will always be, will always have the upper hand. But I think the question we're not asking is, um, you know, I don't think anybody wants to live in poverty, but some people want to be just comfortable in their lives. They yep. don't necessarily want to be a part of the upper class. Yep. So I think that's something else sh to be considered. Okay, you know, cool. someone might be poor, but they might work a little harder and become more comfortable in their lives, and they yep. might be content with that, versus Mo someone who might be even still poor, but want to be in the upper class yep. and work even harder to get there. No, I got so I you. That's and, something and, to consider. Yep. Okay, that's cool. Good point. Most people really aren't trying to be at the top. Most people realize they're never going to make it to the top. They just want to have a little bit more than what they have. Yeah, to like build off of what you were saying, I really agree with that because I think the problem right now is not that we have a bottom 20% and we have a top 20% and there's a big disparity. The problem is that the quality of life at the bottom 20% and the bottom 40% might be really bad. I think the, issue, the, the reason for that is because we have a broken system. Uh, whether you look at areas of justice or healthcare, or the, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Education, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you can go to every sector and you'll find areas that are broken. And to truly fix those issues, I think you can, because we're in a capitalist system and we have a government, and the government is the people that are making the laws, it's at the policy level that is really where the change is going to happen. I asked, how are we going to radically change the system and find the solution, like a real solution, not like, yeah, we'll take a few poor people and tell them to go to school and study a little more, change their thinking. No, Leslie's the only one that has actually offered a solution that I see would be that. It's fucking revolution, man. That's the only thing that's going to make it happen. Otherwise, like when you have an idea that the top 1% are imposing this idea like, oh, give us all the money because we'll create the jobs. I'm like, dude, that's like, why don't you give me all your money? Why don't you give me all your weed? Got it? Those of you who got weed, why don't you give me all your weed and I'll just take care of it? Okay. You know yeah. what I mean? So he, he, I, I got it. I'll, so, I'll work on that. Like, so you'd be like, nah, dude, come on. You're like a pothead. You're going to smoke it all. Like, yeah, well, rich people are also going to take all your money and spend it. So it's like, it's just a question. So anyway, like, what do you do to fix the whole system? Right. Because okay. she's the only one that actually gave an answer. So I think a potential solution would be right now, I think voting is what we can do. That, that's the overall answer. But when we're voting, we have to know who we're voting for. Because right now, if you look at the justice system, right, we have a bunch of corrupt judges that maybe like are racist but when you're voting for judges in you don't really look at who's getting voted in you okay you listen no, who, dude. Like, which Wait, i'm gonna for? i'm gonna disagree with you on one thing okay. there are a few corrupt judges the vast majority of judges are just like the vast majority of their police they're following the script they're following procedures they're really thoughtful people doing what the procedures tell them to do, and then things happen. Right, and who makes the procedures? The government. And there's somebody okay. in the government that's writing the procedures. So, so how do you break that down right besides a violent revolution, which I'm not arguing for. I'm just making the argument that she's the only one that said anything that sounds like it could have a change. I'm going to take a little bit of a step back from the socialist uh, ideology and say universal basic income. Universal basic income. Yep, and then people at the top adjusted for income how much you get per month. So okay. if you're not making any money, you get the maximum amount. If you're making enough that you're living comfortably, you get nothing. For the uh, distribution of wealth and the inequality there, something to think about is that if you make more than $35,000 a year, you're in the top 1% of earners in the world. So with that said, do you want like do the people in this class, most of us are slated to make more than thirty-five thousand dollars a year after they get out of college, do you want a radical redistribution of wealth? Because if it's redistributed, do you want your twenty five hundred dollars a year? Or do yeah, you want to make a salary that's unequal but it's 
going to give you the life that you want. Yeah, exactly. Dude, beautiful point. Because Christina and Taylor from the other day who were at the bottom are still rich by global standards. Absolutely. So like, all right, where do we go from there? Hey, by the way, I'm also, dude, cool point. Thanks for that. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to point out, like, yes, you could be in the top 1% in the whole world, but the cost of living in a different countries is a lot less. So while you could have $35,000 here, you could be living in, like, a shanty town versus if you go somewhere else, you're going to be living in a really nice house. So you can't really compare apples to oranges like that. Okay, you can't, but at the same time, having just got back from Haiti, where it's still, I can, the cost of a beer is a dollar in Haiti. Yeah. It's a dollar in the U.S. The cost of a cup of rice in Haiti is more expensive than a cup of rice in the U.S., right? So Haiti is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. You're, re you're, you're right, essentially. And yet, for me to buy land in Haiti, for me, it's not that different from a lot of places in the United States, which is why people are so immensely poor, right? And so I just look at, well, I, first off, I calculate everything by how much a beer costs, because that's my standard of pricing around the world. And so, not that I drink a lot of beer, it's just my standard of pricing. So a cup of rice and a bottle of beer. And I'm like, damn, that's pretty serious. So those two things right there are $2. And you want to know what the, the basic income is in Haiti? The guaranteed bottom income is $2 a day. That buys you a beer and a cup of rice. And from that, you've got to pay for your health care, you've got to pay for your kids, your kids' education, your home, your transportation, your house, everything. And that's it. So like all of you are talking about solutions that someone else is going to implement, all right? I'm here to like challenge all of you that like this is our problem, all right? Like it, it takes all of us being involved in the one thing that ties all of us together, all of us from different states, all of us from different socioeconomic statuses, and that's the government, all right? All I'm saying is that if for any one of these solutions to work, and there's been some good ones yeah. said today, we need to be involved in that process. Because right now, the most involved people in that process are the ones making the rules, and they are also the ones that are at that top 20%, top 1% of the income. Another thing that I would argue is that um, we have, there's a lot of talk right now with like politics. Um, that, that's the major thing is that like, this is only gonna come from like politics, but there's no action. Um, so, like, people talking about, like, oh, yeah, we need to change this and that, but, like, our generation doesn't vote. We don't actually actively participate, um, and that's so important that we, I guess, like, what the cameraman said um, is that, like, government is what ties us together, um, and nothing's going to change if we don't actually use our power. Like, at, white people, use your power to support the black and brown people around you. Or, and, or poor white people, yeah, by the way. Yeah, exactly. Anyone that's disadvantaged. Like, if you have privilege, use it to support the people around you. I agree with everybody here. Like, the main idea is, like, we got the, our main problem in order to get our solutions to fix our government because we got to pick, know who we are voting into office because they make our decision, they run our, how our lives are. That sometimes, like, we're, like, off low key, like they make like rules and laws that not the everyday person know if you're not into politics. And one thing is that I like to like, for one solution is like look into like our big corporations, like companies, because some companies are for like, they're say like they're American based, they're sending off their profits and their cashes overseas. Yeah. And for those taxes, we're supposed to be for us, for the US to fix our like, have our good housing, schooling, whatever, whatnot, is going to be like, tax less in some overseas companies like uh, overseas like Apple or Amazon where it's like they don't pay basic like not like the max like what they should pay for the US they pay or less in Ireland so say like it's 8% over in Ireland it's supposed to be 35% in the US and then we choose to they choose to do it less overseas instead of the United States okay so here but your family's from Haiti right Yes. Okay, so listen, in the end, though, this is a global issue. We live in a global world where, you know, tonight 700 million people will go to bed hungry, okay? So it's a lot of people. And so when we think about, okay, we're going to fix this only here for the United States, we don't get anywhere if we don't think about fixing it around the world. And fixing it around the world would mean that maybe we're going to have to give some things up, all of us, a little bit. And what's that mean that we got to give up? Like all of us a little bit, you know what I mean? Just out of fairness. And maybe if that doesn't resonate, 
maybe it's just because you haven't put your, we haven't put ourselves in a situation where we actually experience the life. Like I was listening on the BBC this morning. They were interviewing this woman who brought her dead child. So she's in Mozambique. And you know, the, the, because of the cyclone, there's three weeks of flooding. And she literally walked through mud and water for three weeks to get to a place where she could bury her child. And I'm like, and this is not changing. And I just listened to her talk about walking through the mud. And I've walked through mud that's like this deep. I, and I'm like, oh my God. And then I just thought, like, what am I, what am I willing to what am I going to give up? What am I willing? What has to happen? So it's not, so it is about the U.S. And it's like, uh, it's even bigger than that. So, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, I think we keep kind of talking about like a certain system or a certain way things happen is what's going to fix it. But I think it's important to like recognize that the people behind all these systems, like the change might need to come more from like a moral revolution instead of like people being self-interested thinking about what benefits them and then everything will follow i mean okay, the reality I is one. people start with a self-interested motive like for example if people identify as christians actually followed the christ as the liberator of the poor and if and pursued that as opposed to like the the wealth gospel you know what I mean? Like God wants everyone to be rich and have fucking private jets as opposed to, no, actually God really wants you to look out for your people who are less than you. That might be a really cool place to start. I think the solution to the fact that we haven't developed a ton of valid solutions today is to read and become educated. Um, I think that this class alone, and I don't think you think this either, Sam, but this class alone is not enough to, for us to develop like actual solutions and developed opinions. I'm sure some of the solutions that were proposed today were very well thought out and um, very well supported. But I would encourage everyone in this class to just like be curious, like do your own reading, develop your own opinions on these facts because the yeah. truth is that if the only like data you're using to support your um, logic is what we've learned in this class, although it does a great job of that, um, it's just outright not enough. So just be curious and read. All right, last comment. I, I don't expect anyone to, it's like learn any, just like think, just like popcorn ideas so really think. I think that, I, I'm with you on that. Yep, just take it and go.